Welcome back to Dare to Call Him Friend. Yesterday, remember we were talking about cluttered rooms in our heart that we don't want God to see? Well, maybe you're thinking you need to appease an angry God. But is God about to drop the other shoe on his beloved children? No. Unfortunately, many believers believe that they can stave off the anger of God by employing manipulative acts of worship born from an unhealthy fear of God's disapproval. If they tithe enough, if they go to church enough, if they read their Bible enough, then maybe they can get on the good side of God's books. By doing so, though, they really displease the one that they feel they must appease. Psalm 51, verse 16 to 17. For you will not delight in sacrifice, or I would give it. You would not be pleased with a burnt offering. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart, O oh God, you will not despise. Worship is all about intimacy. It is an interchange and a dialogue. We let God know just what we think about him and we allow him to show his heart towards us. Worship helps us to remember God's attributes, his love, and his passions. We are reminded of his mercy and his generosity. Worship creates an atmosphere where we feel safe to open our hearts to him. Worship gives us that opportunity to access his cleansing grace and worship opens our eyes to see his mercy, love and saving power released throughout the world. And this quote is by Robert Weber, W-E-B-B-E-R. In worship, our relationship with Christ is established, maintained, and repaired. Christ meets us in our act of celebrating his death and resurrection. In this worship encounter, the Spirit brings us the very real benefits of Christ's death. Salvation, healing, comfort, hope, guidance, and assurance. Through this encounter, order and meaning comes into our lives. Through worship, a right ordering of God, the world, self, and neighbor is experienced. And the worshiper receives a peace that passes all understanding. Simply put, worship is an it is well with my soul experience. God isn't angry with you at all. Perhaps you are living with some consequences because of some decisions you've made in the past. Or perhaps you've really messed things up right now. God still isn't angry. Yes, there are consequences in the earthly realm that you need to face. Yes, you need to repent, which means to change your mind and start walking in the opposite direction. And you might need to do restitution, which means doing everything in your power to clean up the mess that you just made. But God is still not angry with you. He loves you and his heart desire is that you will come toward him in a stance of gratefulness for the love that he's pouring out toward you. You do him no service to go up to him when you've messed up, like you're some dog who's made a mess. That doesn't please his heart at all. Yes, he wants us to be honest, he wants us to be forthright, and he wants us to ask for forgiveness when we mess up, but he never wants us to do it in a posture that we have to prove to him just how sorry we are before he will forgive us.